Hello, hello. Welcome to Roar of Restored Ministries, where we talk about the reconciliation, restoration, and resurrection power of Jesus Christ. I'm Tammy Lynn, and I'm so honored to have this opportunity to be a vessel used by God to speak into your life, to empower and encourage you to continue running your race, fighting that good fight of faith, and finishing strong in Jesus' name. Family, for his namesake, he's going to do it. For his namesake, he is going to put a new heart in that one that you are praying for. He is going to put a new spirit within that one that you are praying for. That one who has gone astray from him. That one who has been living in rebellion, disobedience, and outside of God's will. That one who has been living according to their self-will. Well, I'm here to tell you that this new heart that God puts within them is going to deliver them from self-will into God's will. Glory, hallelujah. Family, this message began to stir in my spirit very strong on Saturday when I was having a conversation with a dear brother in Christ, and he'd asked me if I had watched the movie A Case for Christ. And at that time, I had not, but I had read the book. Because years ago when I was getting my Bachelor of Science in Christian Ministries, um, that book along with the textbook was in one of my courses. So I knew the book, um, knew the outcome of the book, and knew that um, it was based on true events. Um, but in our conversation, you know, as he was talking, um, Ezekiel 36, 26 hit my spirit very strong. And it just continued to get stronger and stronger throughout the days. Then on Monday, um, I had a little opportunity to just sit and pu pull up a good movie on uh, Pure Flix. And when I pulled it up, there was a case for Christ. So I went ahead and I watched it. And as I watched it, like the Holy Spirit was just confirming um, everything to me that he's been revealing to me about those who have rejected God, who either they don't believe in God, they've just been living a life like an atheist, or they have just turned their hard hearts um, on God, and they've turned a deaf ear to, to his ways. Um, but yet, he was going to one way or another get their attention and put a new heart within them. But it wasn't going to stop with just um, the new heart and, and this new spirit. But that he was truly going to turn their life around. I don't want to give all the details uh, of the movie because if you haven't watched it, I encourage you to watch it or to read the book. It's based on true events. But I'm going to use the Apostle Paul as an, an example. There was a man who was Mr. Saul. And we know that scripture says that in his heart a man plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. In the heart of Saul, he was planning his own way. And he was on this road to Damascus, doing his own thing, having his self-will going on. But we see there was a divine intervention. And this encounter with God brought forth not just a transformation, but a radical transformation. That he went from Mr. Saul to the Apostle Paul. So he wasn't just saved, but he was set on fire for God and his ways. And he became an apostle. Many of you don't take this wrong. You see, I think my mom, in one sense, kind of prayed some small prayers. I knew that she wanted God to save her family and for us all to have salvation in Jesus Christ. And I can't wait to have a conversation with her one day about her prayers. But I know that she prayed for certainly that I would come to know God and that I would, I would you know, be saved and spend eternity, you know, with Jesus and with her. But God didn't just save me. The encounter I had with him radically transformed me. So I'm pretty sure that she was praying for salvation, but not knowing that God was going to do a work in me in which I would become someone that operated in the apostolic, that I would carry a prophetic voice. So he superseded her expectation. And we see that in the story of the Apostle Paul. So again, don't take this wrong, but many of you perhaps have been praying really small prayers. You're just wanting God to save them 
you know, so that they could have eternity with him. And that's absolutely going to happen because when you pray God's will, God's will is going to be done. But I just have a really strong sense within me that God is not only going to save them, but he is going to set them on fire for him and his ways for the rest of their days. Glory. Hallelujah. And so um, we're going to read in Ezekiel um, 20, 36, 26, um, and I'm going to read out of the NASB version and also the Message Bible. I encourage you to uh, get the Word of God out and go deep with Him. Read all of, of 36. There's so much more um, in this, and I just know that the Holy Spirit will not only talk to you about that one that you're praying for, but He may have just something for for, for you also personally you know with this roar of restore that um the lord has placed within me i mean it is about total restorations about souls being restored and then marriages being restored and families being restored so for those of you who you're standing for the restoration of your marriage god is going to restore them back to him but i'm pretty sure during this time and this process that you are in towards the fulfillment of that promise the lord is wanting to do some inner works within you too so embrace the process go deeper with him because family when the restoration takes place and the restoration is going to take place you have got to make sure that you are fully prepared to handle it and then in this divine reset that you will get with that um, loved one that you will know how to pray right you will know how to battle correctly okay are you hearing me glory hallelujah so let's go take a look at ezekiel 36 verse 26 and i'm going to do 26 through 28 moreover i will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you and i will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh I'm hearing the Holy Spirit right now wanting to speak to those of you who you're wondering how God could possibly turn that stony heart in that one that you are praying for, who their heart is hardened towards God and it's even hardened towards you. You're wondering how God can do it. He gave me a word the other day, lay it down. Lay down trying to figure that out. Just trust and know Jeremiah 32, 27, he's the God of all flesh, and nothing is too difficult for God. Amen? And so then it says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will be careful to observe my ordinances. Glory, hallelujah. Let's go and let's dissect this a little bit more because this is some good stuff. He is saying that he will. It's not saying I may, I may. If they if they give me permission, then I may. And I released another word um, because the Holy Spirit was uh, highlighting Lazarus. Well, Lazarus was dead in that grave and he didn't ask for the Lord to resurrect him. He didn't ask for a miracle. The Lord didn't need his permission, okay? Are you, are you hearing what he's saying? So he is saying he will. He will put his spirit within them and cause calls them to walk in his statutes. So he's going to cause this to happen. And he's been very consistent with this word. He's been speaking to me. I know divine interventions. Divine interventions have occurred. They are going to continue to occur. I mean, God is going to continue to doing uh, the works that he began. He's going to continue until it comes to completion, until that promise that he made you comes into fulfillment, until that one that you are praying for that has had that stony heart, that has been living in rebellion, disobedience, and outside of God's will, living in their own self-will on the run, okay, until that one one comes to their senses, humbles themselves, repents, turns from their wicked ways, and returns back to the Father. Okay? So God is not done and he will not be done until that word that he sent you accomplishes what he sent it to accomplish. Amen? So he is going to cause this. He's very intentional. And then it says, you will live in the land that I gave to your forefathers, so you will be my people, and I will be your God. Glory, hallelujah. This is some good news today, family. 
because he's saying he is going to cause this to happen and they will be his and he will be their God. So all those other gods that they are out there, those false gods, okay? Because there's only one true God, okay? Only one true God. And he created the heavens and the earth. And he is the God of all flesh, okay? But they're out there, those little false gods, those counterfeits, okay? Those idols that they've been serving, those things of the world, those days are coming to an end. In Jesus' name, glory, hallelujah. And they will have one God, and they will worship him with all their heart and all their soul. Glory, hallelujah. And let's go take a look at Ezekiel 36, 36. It says, then the nations that are left round about, you will know that I, the Lord, have rebuilt the ruined places and planted that which was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken and will do it. Glory, hallelujah. And family, he told me for his namesake, he would do it. As I was preparing this message and when I was reading out of my NASB Bible, the title beginning right before verse 22 says, Israel to be renewed for his name's sake. And when I read that, immediately he took me back to a holy visitation that I had in April of last year, 2022. He had been telling me, and anytime he's told me that I was going to have a holy visitation, it always happened within a matter of um, a few months. He just has this way of preparing me for it. And so when he began again saying I was going to have a holy visitation, I went into this uh, expectation mode. And then a few months later, which was in April of last year, I had a holy visitation. And he woke me up. I released that prophetic word. You can find it over there on my uh, website at um, Rise Above at Tammy Lynn. Dot com. Um, I also had did a video on it, so you can check out the titles uh, for his namesake. He will do it. Um, if you want to hear that whole uh, prophetic word, um, but he woke me up and I audibly heard the voice of the Lord say, "For my namesake, I will do it." And then he said, "Tell them, you, to tell you that for his namesake." He will do it. And here we are a year later, and we are now in, this is 5783, the year of Gamal, and beginning on April the 21st to uh, May the 20th, it's a time of ER. So I-Y-A-R. And this is a um, time that reflects uh, transitioning um, and connection. Well, he's been highlighting that word transitioning, and I'll release another word on that later, that um, you are transitioning into the fulfillment of that promise. So we are truly in a divinely precise timing of the Lord. Those words have continually to come, have continually come out of my mouth um, many times now in just uh, the, the recent weeks, okay? So I know that truly um, this is a divinely precise timing of the Lord. So, and I'm going to also say this because this is coming to me. So last week I was getting coffee and I heard in my spirit, ready or not, here I come. And he took me back to my childhood when, you know, you would play hide and seek. I'm going to be releasing another word on this also, so I'm not going to go too much into it. But I'm just really excited about it. And I'm just uh, encouraged to tell you all, ready or not, here he comes. Ready or not, here comes the promise maker keeping his promise. And he's been talking even to you, saying that he was turning things around for you, that life was turning around for you because there was um, a good thing that he was doing for you and this good thing was going to appear just like that suddenly out of nowhere right in front of you and it was going to turn your life around. Glory, hallelujah. So he is saying he has spoken. So you've heard him, amen? Come on, say an amen with me because you're hearing what the Lord is saying. He's saying he is putting a new heart in that one you are praying for. And he is putting a new spirit in that one that you are praying for. And he is saying he has spoken 
and he will do it. And for his namesake, he will do it because he is not a man that shall lie, should lie or change uh, his mind. And also something else the Holy Spirit is highlighting for you is that he says, I, the Lord, have rebuilt the ruined places. What was destroyed by the enemy? The Lord is telling you he is going to rebuild it. He is going to rebuild your marriage. And I just feel like going into the whole other prophetic dream that he had given me, which, which, is, which is like, it's, it's truly just the foundation uh, for uh, this Roar of Restore Ministries. And it's something that I'll never forget. And I'll carry this with me and I will always uh, deliver that word from the Lord because he clearly showed me that he was relaying the foundations of marriages and families. I won't go all into that prophetic dream. If you've been with me long enough, then you have heard about it. But I'm just telling you that in the name of Jesus, he is relaying the foundations of marriages and families. And I audibly heard him even speak that in the dream that he was uh, given to me. And then he began to show me that he, the chief cornerstone who had been rejected, was coming back in and taking his rightful place. So what is ruined in your life? What did the enemy tear down? Well, I'm here to tell you the Lord once again is saying he is going to rebuild it. He is going to repair it. He is going to relay the foundations. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. So now let's go take a look at uh, the message uh, Bible. Ezekiel 36, beginning in verse 26. I'll give you a new heart, put a new spirit in you. I'll remove the stone heart from your body. I'm telling you. <laughs> I mean, they are going on the operation table. Because he is doing a heart transplant. It is a season of heart transplants. Glory, hallelujah. And he'll remove the stone of heart from their body and replace it with the heart that God willed. Not self-will. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for just turning it around. Glory, hallelujah. He is intervening in their plans. I am so excited Oh my goodness. And he's also been continually speaking to me about these road to Damascus moments that he is bringing in the lives of many. That he is intervening in their plans. The things that they have planned in their heart, he is bringing a divine intervention. And in this divine intervention, they are not going to walk away the same. Glory, hallelujah. Matter of fact, whenever they experience this encounter with him and are restored back to him, come out of that nonsense living, come out of that sin, come out of that rebellion, okay? When this restoration takes place between between them and the Father who loves them the most, who has a call upon their life, okay, and then he returns them back to you, they're going to look like the person that you once knew, but they are not going to act the same. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Mm -mm -mm. I'm so excited. We just celebrate right now, Father God, in advance for what you are getting ready to do. Bring them home, Father God. Bring them in, Father God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And then he says, I'll put my spirit in you and make it possible for you to do what I tell you. I'm telling you, he's going to do this heart transplant. They're going to have a new heart. They're going to have a new spirit within them. Uh, they're going to come out of their self-will. And then uh, he, he's going to tell them what to do. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you what is at the top of their to-do list is to return back to you. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Mm, you are so amazing, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And then it says, and live by my commands. So they are going to be obedient to him. He's going to tell them what to do. He's going to tell them to come back to you and to make things right. And to apologize to you for what they did to you, what they said about you. They're going to apologize to you that in front of you, they even rejected God. Because many of you, you're praying for someone who they've claimed to be an atheist. But I'm here to tell you, he is bringing a divine intervention. They are going to get a new heart. And a new spirit. Go watch that movie, Case for, Case for Christ. I'm telling you, it's so good. Man, for those of you who watch it, please come back and report to me how the Lord spoke to you. It is some good, good stuff. 
And then he says, you'll once again live in the land I gave to your ancestors. You'll be my people. I'll be your God. And I like this because he says, you'll once again live. So there's going to be an again. There's going to be a moment of beginning again. Glory, hallelujah. And again, and I've got to release another message on this, but I'm just feeling like the Holy Spirit, again, is wanting to emphasize uh, to you what time we are in. It is this time of ER. I-Y-A-R, okay? And it reflects a time of transitioning and connecting, okay? He gave me a word in which I released, and he said that there were going to be reconnections because there has been a disconnection. Come on, I know that the Holy Spirit's talking to, to a lot of y'all right now. There's been a disconnection between you and that one that you are praying for, between you and your wife, between you and your husband, between you and your child or your children, between you and your siblings, between you and that loved one that you are praying for there has been a disconnection and the Holy Spirit is wanting some of you to know who you are praying for um, the restoration with your God ordained spouse there was not a wedding ceremony there was a disconnection before that took place but the Lord told you that they were your kingdom spouse and you have been waiting in uh, obedience to the Lord waiting for this one to come to their senses so that the Lord will bring this reconnection in your life so the two of you would be equally yoked and they would also understand the kingdom assignment just like you understand the kingdom assignment of that union glory hallelujah thank you father god so he's saying you'll once again live with your wife you'll once again live with your husband <laughs> you'll once again be in the land where i had you the first time but you messed it up you become ignorant you fell for the trap of the enemy okay you left where I had once had you, but I will once again put you in that land. Glory, hallelujah. And then let's go down to 36. The nations around you that are still in existence will realize that I, God, rebuild ruins and replant empty waste places. I, God, said so, and I'll do it. Again, he's saying, he said it. There you go. You heard it. Amen. Come on. Give give him, give him an amen. Okay. You heard the Lord. You heard the Holy Spirit. I mean, I'm just a vessel, but come on. I want you to hear the Holy Spirit speak to you. So hear that the Lord has said to you this day that he is going to do it. He is going to put a new heart in that one that you're praying for, put a new spirit within them. Glory. Hallelujah. And he says that he will do it. He is not a man that should lie or change his mind. And lastly, before we end, See, I, I just absolutely love this because the line of Judah has been roaring restore in the land because uh, sin has polluted the land and divorce has become tolerated in the land. People just going around and just picking somebody to lay down with and play house and not build a house and glorify God in it. Okay, that has gone on way too long. The Lord is using you, O oh remnant. He's using you to be a beacon of light and an agent of hope and a voice of truth in the land. He has been saying that he has given us, his people, back the land. Together, we are locking arms and we are taking back the land and we are going to occupy it. So whenever all this happens, he says the nations around you, and I love this because, man... When God is done with you in this situation, the enemy is going to wish he never messed with you. <laughs> because he's not saying, hey, just your local church is going to hear about this. He is saying the nations is going to hear about this. So this is mega. Everybody's going to hear about how God restored your marriage. Because it is God's will for your marriage to be restored. It is not his will that two people who he joined together should be separated. It is not his will for a spouse to become angry and hard-hearted have a stony heart and walk away from their spouse, abandoning their covenant, abandoning their spouse, abandoning their children, abandoning their duty, okay, breaking the promises that they made to you. That is not the will of God. So everybody is going to see this and God is going to use you and that testimony that he puts upon your lips, glory, hallelujah, and he's been consistent with saying that. He is putting the testimonies upon the lips of his people. He's going to put that testimony 
testimony upon your lips. Others are going to hear about it. And the Holy Spirit is going to be using your testimony to convict some. Because see, there's been some church folks. There's been some folks around you calling themselves the Christian. Oh, we love them. Forgive them. Okay, come on. We ain't got time for bitterness and all that kind of stuff. All right, we ain't got time to cast stones at anybody. Okay, we're taking the land. We're too busy just uh, knocking out the giants, taking out the giants, taking back the land and occupying the land. But there are some around you, okay, that they claim that they know God, but they've been ignoring God's will. They've been kind of like the prodigal in the sense. They've turned a deaf ear on, on God's ways, okay? So they've ignored what all the scriptures has said about covenant marriages, about the two people that God brings together. And so when you come forth, and you are going to come forth in the name of Jesus, glory, hallelujah, you are going to come forth and you are going to testify, and your testimony is going to bring convictions to people who have been in the pulpit who have refused to preach restoration. My, my, my. Oh my goodness, that's a whole fresh revelation. But I'm getting just as I'm ministering this, and I'm like, come on. <laughs> I mean, this is some really good news. Because those who refuse to stand with you, those who refused to uh, pray with you about your marriage, and you had to do it all alone, which technically you're not alone because he never leaves us or forsakes us, okay? But you've had to spend some time by yourself on your knees crying behind closed doors, okay? Because nobody would pray with you. Nobody would say... Um, with you what the will of God was for you and for your marriage or you and um, regarding that loved one that you've been praying for okay they were like well oh, bless their hearts hope they just come out of that addiction oh well they just moved on you know and they're just happy over there just let them go oh you deserve somebody better you don't deserve anybody that abandons you okay that's not faith talk that is weak talk that's emotion talk okay but we the remnant okay we we live by faith and we live according to the word of God so there's a lot of people People who are in the church and that they know God, but they didn't have the faith to believe for the restoration of your marriage. They didn't have the faith for your loved one to be delivered from addiction. Come on now. So he's going to use your testimony to convict them because they're going to hear your testimony and they're going to re-examine the way they think. Glory, hallelujah. Again, we are taking back the land and we are going to occupy it. And together we roar, restore, and we roar no more. Okay? No more divorce. No more abandonment. Okay? No more sin. No more sin in, in, in your home. No more sin in our home. No more generational curses. Okay? Oh my goodness. Thank you, Father God. I'm just feeling so excited because those days are coming to an end. See, the silence that has been in the land has allowed generational curses to continue. You. So that's why it's like now here you are and you're here because you're looking for hope and the Holy Spirit led you here because he directs the steps of his people. Okay. And he is like ha having me deliver this word to you today. And so in this moment today, okay, you are now experiencing what has been going on in the land for far too long. So that one who abandoned you, there's a great chance somebody abandoned them in their childhood. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. That one who cheated on you, there's a great chance that somebody and their bloodline was a cheater, okay? Come on now. And you, glory, hallelujah, thank you, Father God, you are the one that is called to break the generational curses. Glory, hallelujah, thank you, Father God. The curses are coming to an end. And now it is the time for the generational blessings to begin. Glory, hallelujah, thank you, Father God. Family, be encouraged by this word. Stay strong in your faith. Stand firm on the word of God. And I will talk to you all soon. Shalom.